NHS nurses in England, Wales and Northern Ireland are staging a second strike today as a dispute with the government over pay ramps up pressure on already stretched hospitals. Well, less than a week ago, <coughs> members of the Royal College of Nursing took industrial action. It was their first and the biggest strike in NHS history. We're joined now by the General Secretary of the RCN, Pat Cullen in Newcastle, who's on the picket line. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us this morning. I mean, morning. It, it must be a hard day from the point of view that it, it's not looking good for resolution on this any time soon, has it? The Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, has made it clear he's not going to back down, that discussions on pay and not going to come into this. So where do you go from here? Look, uh, my message to the Prime Minister this morning is he needs to stop leaving the hundreds of thousands of nurses that I represent out in the cold. He needs to get into a room and start to negotiate and bring this to an end uh, at, before the end of this week and certainly before Christmas. So they say, the government say, they just simply cannot afford the pay rise, that it will lead to higher inflation. You know, you put forward this 19% figure. Do you, do you think you should put forward a more achievable one? Is it, is it the figures here that you think they're getting in the way? Is it time to reassess what you're calling for? Because at the moment, it's, we're going to be stuck in a situation, aren't we, where you're saying we're going to keep striking until the government do something, and the government say, well, we're not backing down. Look, uh, the first thing I would say to the Prime Minister is he cannot not afford to do something to bring the NHS back from, from the brink. And he can only do that by having um, the nursing staff that he requires to be able to provide the services for, for the people of this country. That's the first thing. I've also said time and time again, let's get into a room and start negotiating and let's start talking. I won't dig in if he won't dig in. But we cannot find the room um, that we need to get into to negotiate. Uh, but it's incumbent on him this week to make that room available, get round the table and start to speak on behalf of these brilliant but, nurses and not keep them out on picket lines. They want to be in their hospitals. But Pat, Pat a lot of people will have a lot of sympathy uh, for you and the nurses. But the point is, we, I interviewed you last week when you first went on strike and we had the same conversation then and nothing has moved on and no-one wants to these strikes, yeah. especially in your industry, is there, like Charlotte says, is there a chance that you could come out publicly and say, OK, our position is 12%, 11%, and we are prepared to sit down and speak and have an honest and fair conversation with the Prime Minister, with Steve Barclay, and discuss around that 11 12% figure? I think a lot of public would be on your... will be right behind you. Then. So, well, that is absolutely the right thing to do. And it almost calls the government's bluff, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, you, you've made a very valid point about um, the public being right behind us. Last week was testimony to that. Every picket line I visited last week, uh, members of the public stood steadfast right alongside every single nursing staff member that was on those picket lines. We don't want to be here, but we've said time and time again, let's get into a room, let's start to talk, let's have a negotiation. That's what negotiations are about, about setting out my position, government set out there, and then we will, we will I'm sure, um, we will not be found to be unreasonable. I keep saying we aren't going to dig in if they don't dig in. But he really needs to get into a, a room now with myself. How long can you carry on, though? We're hearing some reports, and you can confirm some of this, that, that although, um, you know, a number of the nurses w decided they would support the strikes, only about 10% actually d did go out onto the picket lines and strike. Why is that? And also, would that reduce as you continue into January with more strikes? And do you start to lose some of that support? Well, again, uh, we don't want to have to do this. That's the first thing I'll keep saying. Last um, Thursday, we had a very safe strike. We made sure that, from our perspective, that our patients were um, continued to be kept safe um, in the current circumstances. That was really important for those nursing staff that were, stri were striking last week. However, if this government continues to give um, nursing staff the cold shoulders, we will have no option but to increase the number of hospitals uh, and, and services that will be involved in future industrial action and that will mean an increase in nursing staff as well but look I really want to say very clearly this morning 
I am really, really pleading with the Prime Minister now, please get into your room with me before the end of the week and start to talk to me on behalf of the hundreds of thousands of nurses and the patients that we represent as well. And again, let's set out our position and let's come to, let's bring this to a conclusion. He can actually bring this to a conclusion by the end of the week and there will be no future strikes. But this is completely within their, sho within the, on their shoulders now. And I would ask them again and again, get into a room. OK, and just to be clear on this then, if, if they don't and they, they refuse to engage in a conversation about pay, as they've said that they will do, on timescales from the point of view of how long you will continue the strikes for, the suggestions have been for the next six months we can expect them. Are you saying that they would carry on indefinitely? Well, clearly, uh, in line with the legislation, the mandate's for six months. But we don't even want to continue on for the next six hours. We want to get a resolution for this on behalf of the nursing staff who do not want to be in this position. I've gone onto this picket line this morning very early and spoke to the many members that are standing here for another day. Every single one of them are doing this with a really, really heavy heart. They don't want to be here. But we do need to find a resolution. And it is the Prime Minister that needs to step in here and find this resolution alongside me on behalf of the people of this country and the, and, and, and the nursing staff that I represent. Mm. Uh, what about Steve Barclay? I just want to um, refer to some comments you've made before about him, that uh, some bully boy tactics and actually uh, that he was that we accusing him of sexism uh, as well, of sort of the, the view he has of a female-dominated world that you work in. Just explain that. Can you explain that a little bit more? D do you really believe there's something going on there in terms of sexism from the likes of Steve Barclay? Yes, I do believe that. Um, I was brought down to a meeting last week uh, along with um, a number of my colleagues. And again, as soon as we entered that room, uh, um, Steve Barclay made it very clear that he wasn't going to negotiate with me on behalf of, of my members uh, in relation to their pay. There are a whole lot of other reasons why we have drawn those conclusions. For example, um, deciding that uh, care isn't that important, that he would want to get into a room and negotiate for the 90% female profession that I represent, um, making suggestions that other people with a few hours training, particularly the military, um, could come in and take over um, the role of our um, highly expert and highly educated nurses with just a few hours training. And I would suggest to him that that would not, would not be something that a nurse would decide they, they could do with a few hours training, um, move in and take over from our military. That would not be possible for a nurse to do that. So there, when, you, when you draw conclusions from all all of the um, discussions that we have had, yes, th those are conclusions that, that our nursing staff have come to. OK. Well, listen, we have the Government Minister Grant Shapps coming on later this morning. What would your message be to him? What point would you like to put to him? Because we will be talking to him about the strikes. Well, I would say it's a week now since any member of government uh, has contacted the Royal College of Nursing to sit down with us and speak on behalf of the hundreds of thousands of nurses that I represent. I would plead to grant shops or any of the government ministers that will come out today and speak. Instead of coming on the media and discussing and negotiating um, through the media, get into a room, use their time um, productively, get into a room with me and start to talk on behalf of those hundreds of thousands of nurses. And again, my last word to them is, we won't dig in if you won't dig in. So let's do that and let's do it today. I'm available all day um, today and will be available um, all the rest of this week. So let's Let's do it. Let, let's sit down and, and start negotiations. OK, Pat Callan there, the General Secretary of the RCN. Thanks very much for joining us this morning.